In this video, we're going to talk about two column proofs as it relates to angles. So let's draw a picture first. Okay, that does not look like a straight line. Let's try that again. So we're going to say this is angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3. So we're given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Our task is to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So how can we do it? Well, let's start with a two-column proof. In the first column, we're going to write all of our statements. And in the second column, we're going to write the reasons for those statements. So the first thing you want to write is what you're given. That is, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So that's statement 1. Now, what else can we say? Whenever you have two lines intersecting each other, they form vertical angles. So let's say if this angle is 60, this angle is 60 as well. So notice that angle 2 and 3 are vertical angles. So we could say angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. And the reason? Vertical angles are congruent. Now, if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and if angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, we can make the statement that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And this is based on the transitive property. So another example of the transitive property is if angle A is congruent to angle B, and if angle B is congruent to angle C, then we could say that angle A is congruent to angle C. So that's the basic idea of the transitive property, especially as it relates to uh, angles. So that's it for this problem. Now let's look at another example. So let's call this angle 1, angle 2, angle 4, and angle 3. And let's say that we're given that angle 1 is supplementary to angle 2. And also angle 3 is supplementary to angle 4. And also, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Your task is to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. So feel free to design a two-column proof that proves this statement. So if you want to pause the video, uh, now is the time to do it. Now, the first thing we should do is write the statements that we're given. So number one, we're given that angle one is supplementary to angle two. So that's a given. And then number two, we're given that angle three is supplementary to angle four. So that's a given as well. And also number three, Angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. So that's given. So what can we do at this point? Now let's use numbers. Now we know that angle 1 and 4 are congruent. So let's say if angle 1 is 100 degrees. That means angle 4 is 100. Now notice that 1 and 2 form a linear pair. That means that they add up to 180. They're supplementary. So if angle 1 is 100, angle 2 has to be 80. And if angle 4 is 100, 
and 4 and 3 form a linear pair, which means they're supplementary. Angle 3 has to be 80 as well. So therefore, we can make the statement that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. And the reason is that supplements of congruent angles are congruent. Now let's see if we can make sense of that reason. So let's focus on a sentence. So what are the supplements that are talked about in that sentence? The supplements are angle 2 and angle 3. Angle 2 is supplementary to angle 1. Angle 3 is supplementary to angle 4. So the supplements, that is angle 2 and 3, of congruent angles, the congruent angles are 1 and 4, because in uh, statement 3, we said 1 and 4 are congruent. So supplements 2 and 3 of congruent angles, which are 1 and 4, are congruent. So if 2 and 3 are supplements of these congruent angles, then 2 and 3 are congruent. That's what that sentence is saying. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And that's how you can prove that angles 2 and 3 are congruent, because they're supplementary to congruent angles. Let's work on another problem. So this is going to be A, B, C, and D. So this is going to be angle 1, angle 2, 3, and 4. So given that angle B, A, C, is congruent to angle BCA and that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, go ahead and prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So you can try this out if you want. But let's start with a two column proof. So what's the first thing that we should write? So we should always write what we're given. And that is angle BAC is congruent to angle BCA. And that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. So that's given. Now what else do we know? The next thing that we need to do is make the statement that the measure of angle BAC is equal to the measure of angle BCA. We could say that the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 4. And the reason for this definition of congruent angles. Now let's move on to step 3. Notice that angle BAC is the sum of angles 1 and 2. And also, BCA is the sum of angles 3 and 4. So we could say that the measure of angle BAC is equal to the sum of the measures of angle 1 and angle 2. We could also say that the measure of angle BCA is the sum of the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4, as we highlighted earlier. And so what reason can we use for this part? This is going to be the angle addition postulate. Now, number four. Since the measure of angle BAC is equal to the measure of angle BCA, we could say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 because they're equal to these two things which are equal to each other. 
So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. And so this is based on the substitution property. Now notice that angle 2 is equal to angle 4. So therefore, we could subtract these two angles from both sides because they're equal to each other. So in step 5, we could say that angle 1, or the measure of angle 1, is equal to the measure of angle 3 based on the subtraction property. And finally, we can make our final statement that if the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3, then angle 1 has to be congruent to angle 3 based on the definition of congruent angles. And so that's it. That's how you can prove this statement. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.